Hello, welcome to Revelator John. What is rotor thrust or helicopter rotor thrust? Well, if we consider uh, the rotor blades uh, as they're rotating, as they're being driven uh, in its rotation uh, by the uh, helicopter engine or engines, uh, then uh, they each blade is creating drag. So to overcome the uh, drag of the, the blades themselves, uh, the engines are, are rotating the blades and they're creating rotor thrust. So um, we're also uh, considering thrust as in total rotor thrust of all the blades combined uh, when they create the rotor disc. So in order to get the aircraft moving, uh, in other words, to lift it off into the, uh, into the hover or to make it vertically climb or for make it uh, fly forwards or backwards, we have to tilt the disc in the direction of travel which we want to go. So if we're climbing vertically, we're gonna keep the rotor disc horizontal, and then we increase the lift on each um, blade uh, until we have a, a force that overcomes the weight of, uh, overcomes the force of weight, and also is much greater than weight, and it creates a propulsive force upwards, vertically upwards. So that is rotor thrust. So rotor thrust is the propulsive force that actually uh, gets the uh, whole rotor disc and by association because the blades are attached to the main rotor hub and also the fuselage, the whole fuselage moving in a, in a particular direction. So this could be rotor thrust can be uh, propelling the aircraft uh, or the helicopter vertically upwards. Rotor thrust can be propelling the aircraft or the helicopter forwards, backwards, to the side, so on and so forth. Now, one thing about rotor thrust that we have to um, acknowledge. The rotor thrust is there to overcome the um, drag uh, of the aircraft over the parasite drag, over the fuselage, but also the aerodynamic drag. It is the, the force that actually gets the helicopter moving as well. Now because we have the rotating blades as well, rotor thrust uh, or blade thrust um, is created but not, might not necessarily be moving the fuselage when the helicopter is on the ground. So, uh, but it is there as, a, uh, as an overcoming force if you like of the drag that is uh, being produced by the rotating blades. So when the rotor thrust or the combined rotor blade thrust um, is enough to overcome the weight of the aircraft and also propel the aircraft um, away from the surface or away from its static position, that's when we have uh, a dynamic rotor thrust um, situation. So if we uh, raise the collective on the uh, on the helicopter that increases the pitch of all the blades at all the same time and that will uh, increase lift of all the blades and that will eventually create rotor thrust that overcomes the weight of the aircraft and the aircraft will start to move vertically up until until such point that we don't need it to climb anymore so the the uh, rotor thrust is pointing vertically up and it is perpendicular 90 degrees to what is known as the tip path plane, the plane at which the rotor blade tips uh, move through. So if we're saying that the rotor disc is parallel to the surface, then the, um, then the rotor thrust is pointing directly up at 90 degrees. So if we want to move the helicopter forward into forward transition into forward flight, essentially we have to tilt that disc forward. So in order to get the uh, rotor thrust to actually propel the aircraft forward, some of that vertical thrust has to be converted into horizontal thrust. So there's a component where we're draining the vertical thrust to combine it into horizontal thrust to get the aircraft moving. So if that, if the vertical thrust wasn't replenished, in other words, if we didn't add more engine power, what would happen is as we start to convert that vertical thrust into horizontal thrust, as we start to move forward, the aircraft will start to descend. So 
um, the um, the use of rotor thrust in a helicopter is um, always being um, adjusted or being monitored and always being manipulated as well by the controls uh, especially of the the uh, collective which will produce enough engine power to keep the blades rotating at a constant speed to produce um, the sufficient amount of lift to overcome the weight of the helicopter but also the sufficient amount of rotor thrust to achieve the flight parameter which we which we desire thank you